So I'm going to use the get users function so that I can demonstrate the headers. So one thing I want to show you is the definition or the signature of those methods. So if you put your cursor over this in an F12, um, I'm going to scroll down a little bit. You can see we can pass headers, we can pass params, and we can also pass observe. And if I scroll down a little bit more, you can see we have a few other parameters or options that we can pass to these methods. And you can see some of them have already been set. So the observe, you can see there's a string body that is set there. And that technically means that it's going to convert the HTTP response. It's going to take the body and then parse it to whatever type that we specify. So you can see that it doesn't have a data type, but it has an actual value. So you see the report progress, they tell you it takes a Boolean. But if you look at the observe or the response type, you can see that right here, they're passing an actual value. So that's why we have some of the default behaviors that we have. But for now, let's just focus on headers so you can see the headers is of type HTTP headers or you can pass in an object here you can see you can put a string as the key and then you can pass in a string or an array of string as the value and we can also click inside of that header to go to the definition file and you can see if you scroll down there is a constructor here you just pass an object with a string and then the value is going to be a string or an array of string the key is going to be a string as well and then the value is going to be a string or an array of string as you can see here in this constructor right there so let's go ahead and close this and this is always a good idea to understand exactly what's going on behind the scene so that you know exactly how to how to use those functions so i'm going to go down here and let's say i'm going to do a constant and let's call this constant my headers so what i can do here i can just call the constructor oops that's HTTP headers. And then I can just leave it like that, right? And then I can set more values to it or more headers to it later. But another thing I can do is I can call some of the methods on the actual constructor itself and then pass in the values that I wanna pass. So let's use the constructor first and then we'll use the other methods or functions in that inside a class. So we saw earlier that we can pass in an object. So we're gonna pass in an object. And we can pass in a key, which is going to be a string. So I'm going to say my header. And then we can pass it in a value, which is a string or an array of strings. So let's pass in a string first. So I'm going to say uh, this is the value. Well, this is a bad example. I'm just going to remove this and then say header value. So now we have this my headers that we can pass to this request. Again, if you go over into the definition, you can see that the key for headers, after you put in the URL, you pass in these options here, and then it's an object for everything that we can pass here. And then the key for headers is actually headers. Okay, so we can just copy this and we're going to say, hey, here I'm going to pass in some more options, which is an object. And then there's one for headers, and then we can pass in my headers. Okay, so that's how that works. So now you can see we're not only passing, you know, the URL, and everything else, we're also passing my headers. So now if we go in the browser and the request that we're sending, we should see this my header and then header value. So let's go over to the browser. Okay, so I guess the page refresh. Now to see those, you have to go to the uh, network tab. So we're going to go to the network tab and into the users because that's the one that we put the headers in. And, and it's going to collapse this one. And now if you look at the request headers, you can see our header down below. So my header and then header value which is right here. Now, another thing you guys need to understand is that the instance of the headers is immutable. So for instance, if I go and copy this and I go to the next line and then I call the set method, and then let's say I'm gonna set another uh, header. So I'm gonna say ID, and then I'm gonna set this equal to, let's say one, two, three, four. Now, remember I just told you it's immutable. So whenever you call the set, on the headers, what it's gonna do is it's gonna return a new instance of that class. And as you can see here, we're not setting that new instance to a new variable. So technically what I'm trying to say is this code is wrong because this is immutable. Like we can't mutate it or we can change it. We have to set it equal to itself in this situation. So we can do my headers and then let's make this a let because we're changing it now. And then we set it equal to this. So you can see if I leave this out, and I set this header, or I could use the append as well, you will see that we won't see this. So if we go back and we look at the user's request and we see the request headers, and you can see that we don't see this header because whenever you call the set or the append, 
it's going to return a new instance of this. So if you want to, on this line 15, we want to set more headers, we actually have to do something like this and set it equal because it's going to, this set is going to return a new instance of, of the object that we defined here. And then we're saving it again inside here. So now if we go back, go into the request, request headers, you can see the ID is here and my header is down below. So that's the one thing you really have to understand. These, these uh, instances that you create using the HTTP headers class, they're immutable, like you can't really change them. So let's go ahead and copy this and let's go to the next line. Uh, we can call the append. So the difference between the set and append, when you call set, if you already had a key ID, it's going to override it. But when you use append, it's just going to add it to that specific um, header. So now if we change this, number to like say zero 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 you'll see that we'll have id equals those two so let's go back and i'm going to refresh this go to users now you see the id is one two three and then zero 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 however if i go back and call set again on this it's going to override this one two three four so if we go back we go to users you can see now it's only zero zero so that's the difference between the append appends mean you are adding to that specific key and then set means you're going to override it that's just the definition now there's more you can do with this so if we go inside of the class again you can see there is a has that you can call you pass in the name of the or the key of the header you're looking for and it's going to tell you if it's if the header is in the uh, HTTP request or not and we can use get to pass in the name and it's going to return a string if it can find the header or null if it doesn't find it you can get an array of all of the um, HTTP headers by calling keys and there's a get all. You can see that um, we have a few options here. So I say you guys can go ahead and play around with this. But some of those, for instance, to, you know, keys, get all uh, and the get and the has, you would probably use those whenever you're receiving a response so that you can check for specific headers and stuff. It's not a good use of your time for me to go to each one of them, but at least you know how to use it. And lastly, remember that we can pass in an array here instead of just one string. So I put some bracket here and I can pass another one. So I'm just gonna copy that one and then pass another one here, let's say two. Okay, so that works as well. And the only way you're going to know how to use those uh, classes and stuff is to just go into the definition file. So you can see I can go into the definition file. That's what the D stands for. And you can see that I'm using this constructor, which is why when I clicked on this, it determines that I'm using the constructor because as you can see here, I'm using the constructor because I called a new and then I pass in the class name and then I pass some values to the constructor uh function as you can see here this is the constructor and it takes some values so you can see i can pass in a string or an array of string so that's how i know or you would know how to use this so it's pretty simple you set your headers and then you pass in them as options into the http request and this is also true for the other types of http requests so for the post the put etc they all take options so if i show you here you can see that you can still pass options after you pass this URL, anybody if you have any, and then more options, which is the same signature that we have. So we're gonna go ahead and look at all of those options and I'm gonna show you how important those options are because they're actually really important for our requests.